Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife Melissa and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald and this is Curiosity. Inc. I'm home, honey! Hi guys and welcome to today's episode. Well, we're going to do another unboxing today. I've been going through some stuff that was dropped off while I was away. Um, I wouldn't say on vacation, but I was uh, in New York on business for a few days. I come back and there's boxes of stuff waiting here for me. I've struck a deal on them and uh, now we're going to go through and see exactly what we got. So every once in a while when I'm away, um, folks will drop things off for me to have a look at. So there was a box, a bag, another little box there. Um, this bag bunch of keys in a cube and a, and a wooden box. Well, we're going to go through and see what's inside and uh, and go through. Now, what, from what the guy was asking for everything, it seemed to be a very fair price. Um, I already saw that there was, you know, a bag full of sunglass stuff. So I thought, well, it's worth taking a risk on. Plus, these videos are kind of fun to do. So let's go through together. Um, hmm, music pogs, not going to be worth a whole lot. <laughs> This was a big thing back in the 90s, yeah, 1993. It was a game based off of uh, milk bottle caps that people used to play and collect these things. Um, they're pretty much not worth anything now. But let's set that aside and we'll try and thin out some of the things that are, you know, kind of useless and put them away. The rest of this box appears to have a whole bunch of knives in it. Now, some are not in great condition. Um, you know, a little bit of wear here and there, but... Still, there's collectors who buy and restore these. That one's got a nice little sheath with it. If you guys are asking why I'm not using a tripod, it's because I never know that this stuff's going to happen. I should probably just keep one here and one at home. I keep it at home because my kid uses it. That's a nice little jackknife. Nice little red sort of Bakelite handle on that. I'll put that in a slightly nicer pile. Ugh! Um, do you see what I see? There's an eyeball staring back at me. Uh, oh, and that's even more disturbing. There's a scalpel in with the eyeball. Uh, let's hope that those two events weren't related. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to reach in and I'm going to reach in and touch it. Uh, well, I mean, it is just kind of glass. Okay, hang on. I got to move this. Well, this box is heavy. There's something inside of that. We'll go through that in a second. I'm going to get this old prosthetic eyeball out of here. Yep. That's what it is. Somebody's glass eye. Somebody's grandpa probably had that in his old socket with probably take it out and scare kids with it. Um, surprisingly, there are collectors for antique glass eyeballs. So as creepy as that is, I don't like the fact there was a scalpel in with it. Um, as creepy as that is, somebody will buy that. That will probably sell pretty quickly. Um, the rest of this now, I'm kind of, that's, these are throwing knives. That's a whole set of throwing knives right there. You, you can tell from the way that they, uh, the look, they're very slim. They're likely balanced really well too. A lot of times they're, uh, they're balanced just right. So when you throw them, they kind of see that. So that is a throwing knife. Um, little set of those. What is this? Some, some kind of secret agents kit of accessories, little skeleton keys. And people always do buy those. Chubb, those are like a, a secure key. Uh, some old knives, lots of pocket knives. Some may have advertisement on them, like Royal Crown Hotel and Coronation. If you find one that says, you know, like Pepsi or something on it, those can be pretty interesting too. Atlas Crane. So those would be like the big overhead cranes. Lots of little knives. And there's always lots of collectors out there looking for pocket knives. And the little guys like this do well. That's just a pretty little, um, looks almost like tortoise shell. Has the look of tortoise shell. Might be. There's another little one right there. I'm gonna open up the tortoise shell knife and see where it's manufactured, whether it's Sheffield or whether it's uh, a Japanese blade, we'll get an idea about what year it's from. Now it's kind of hard to read in this light, but it does say Sheffield on the bottom, it's a little worn out. Um, so this would be an English little pocket knife. And that very well could be uh, like a tortoise shell handle that's on there. 
kind of a cute little thing. I'm curious to know though, what we have inside of this box because it was really heavy. Okay, this box looks like it might have been uh, like a telescope box at one point. It's got little dovetail edges on it, like what you'd see in the 40s or 50s, maybe for a chemistry set. Let's hope it's not full of actual human eyeballs, you know? Um, mind you, I'd kind of be okay if it was full of <laughs> um, glass eyeballs because those are kind of collectible. But let's see what's inside. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, okay. Well, I spot this right away. That's a uh, Gillette safety razor. It's not a, um, what they would call like a, uh, you know, adjustable, which would be more collectible, but it is, you know, a nice safety razor. Probably once it's cleaned up, $20, $30 kind of piece. Uh, funny little lighter. Some of this stuff is newer. Um, some of it is a little older. This is Zippo lighter from a Caterpillar dealer here where I am. That's probably a 1950s or 60s looking Zippo. It's an older Zippo. And I think the one that has a concealed uh, hinge on it is a little bit more on the collectible side, but that's still a pretty good piece. And if you get a, oh, it still has a bit of flint in there. If you get that working, fill it up with fluid, get it working. It's, um, you know, probably like, because it's got the Caterpillar on it, might even be like a $60 lighter. And I'm talking Canadian dollars here, in case you're wondering. There's another lighter there with a skull on it. Some of this stuff is sort of newer and, um, you know, not as collectible. This is from Calgary Ginger Ale, Calgary Brewing Company. They had a great logo. In fact, I have a crate over here, right down here with their logo on it. it had this great bison or buffalo right in the middle. So this would have been used to open the bottles that came out of that crate. 1940s, uh, probably about a $25 piece, but still a, a good little collectible to come out of that box. This is a straight razor, unchipped, uncracked blade. Well, it has a couple little marks, but nothing that can't be cleaned up on it. It's German made crown and sword with probably a bone handle on it. Um, some razors can be worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars. This is, you know, a German made is not a bad one. Uh, if it's all cleaned up and polished and, and repaired, that could be a 60 to $80 razor to the right person, but I don't have a box for it. So honestly, I'll probably take whatever I can get for it. Um, I might just dump this box out and see what else is in here. Okay, I have dumped everything out here. We've got another um, bottle opener from the Corona Hotel. I'm gonna put the stuff that's a little bit better here. This is a nice early, coca-cola bottle opener so there's a few good pieces in here and then there's stuff that's just kind of newer and kitschy and probably not worth a whole lot a las vegas lighter probably from you know the 2000s or, or 90s so kind of a, a mix of things in here um, i did see that there's another bullet lighter of course these were popular after world war ii it looks intact flint is not functioning on it but um, those are pretty collectible people do like their bullet lighters random darts in here um so a few good things i mean we got a, a razor look there's a brand new blade for the razor that goes together um, not that i'm going to try shaving with it but that'll have to be cleaned up first uh there's some stuff that's kind of just more on the junky side so i'm going to separate the stuff that's not that great look there's a little gumby you guys remember gumby and pokey and they had these little bendy sort of figures that could date to the 1960s, although they still make replicas of Gumby and Pokey to this day. Uh, it has kind of an older look to it. What is that? Oh, a nice little pendant of the sun. Don't know how terribly old it is, but it sure is kind of cool. This bag is full of old sunglasses and a random pyramid made out of uh, stone, probably like a paperweight. Now, the right pair of sunglasses can be worth some good money. Um, some of them can be worth hundreds or even thousands of dollars if they're, you know, from the right vintage or era. Um, many of these feel lightweight, like they're just generic sort of uh, grocery store kind of glasses, but you never know. There might be a, a pair in here that stands out or is a little bit better. I'm going to keep going through. Oh, boy. Those are your 1980s uh, going to a concert cataract looking glasses. Um, probably ski glasses, let me keep those aside. Your John Lennon kind of looking sunglasses. 
I'm not really seeing too much of uh, substance or quality here. These are all kind of like, you know, new. You could probably pick them up for five bucks a piece sort of deal. Um, so I'll keep sifting through. Hopefully there's at least one pair in here that's of interest. Otherwise, uh, these might just all go to auction. And I don't think this is my new look either. So I'm going to put these back into the bag and I'll probably just run them through uh, auction. The bag itself is an old Kodak camera case, so that might be worth hanging on to just to try and resell. But the rest of this stuff, I don't need it in my store. Okay, now to look through some of the other stuff. Like this plastic bag. You can see already there's a troll doll in here. And this actually does look like one of the older kind of 1960s trolls. Quite a bit larger. They scaled these things down. Um, and let's see if he has any information on the back of his neck. Uh, what does he say? USA foreign patents made in Denmark. Yeah, that would be one of the early ones. There are collectors of these. Um, I don't know what his name is, but um, with a little bit of cleaning, that will be something that can be sold in a shop. Uh, the rest of the stuff in here, well, that's debatable what, whether I'm going to be able to do anything with it or not. Um, there's, you know, little um, plastic model kits, anatomical things that are kind of broken. And I do see... Uh, McDonald's Inspector Gadget toy. This came out. That's when Matthew Broderick was Inspector Gadget. Uh, and every week, I think you get a Happy Meal. You get a different part. And you'd have to build him. Um, it looks like all the parts might be there. Let's see if I can't put them together. And look, he's all there, even with his Go Go Gadget hat. One of my favorite shows from the 1980s, the cartoon. Um, not really sure how this uh, movie did in the box office overall, but I can tell you that uh, this complete toy, probably worth about $30, $35 Canadian complete, and uh, all his parts are there. So um, kind of a cool find out of a plastic bag of what looked like junk. Okay, now you might look at this and think it's just a selection of pens. This is just a modern pen, that's nothing. Um, that's probably a 1950s pen. This is a slightly older fountain pen, a little bit more on the collectible side and in decent condition. Um, but this one kind of caught my eye. Now you look at it and just think, okay, it's marked uh, Waterman's. Clearly that's just a nice little pen, but this uh, pen would have gone in a different pocket and you'll understand why in a second. Um, it's a thermometer. That's what this is. It's a thermometer. Um, so uh, let's hope that that was, um, you know, washed before they put it back away, but uh, kind of a cool thing. And do people do collect medical um, items, hopefully like the glass eye, and hopefully for a thermometer like that. Now, in some cases, families uh, pass along war medals from one generation to the next, and then it kind of finds an end of the line. And the person who's the last one to have it, you hope that they find a good home for it. And in this case, uh, I get to be the home for these medals. Now, what's special about this assortment, um, not just the fact that uh, they are World War I and World War II medals from Britain and Canada, uh, is the fact that they were all related. So we have what I believe were um, brother-in-law's medals. Um, but this gentleman here, he didn't make it. In the United States, you would call this like a, they have a purple heart, but this is the memorial cross when someone passes away. Uh, this gentleman was a World War I soldier named uh, Private Andrew Ross. He was in the 29th Battalion of the Canadian Infantry. Um, and unfortunately, he was killed in action in saint Eloi, Belgium. And that was in 1916. He was 37 years old and uh, received these medal medals posthumously. So it's nice to keep a set like this together. Nice that there's a lot of family medals. And what other, the other interesting thing is that while they were fighting overseas, the wives were back home and they were contributing to the war effort as well. So these are all women's volunteer service, war worker pins for all the ladies, um, well, for, for the both of their wives that would have been working, contributing to the war effort at that time. And they kept them all on this pin as a memento of the war effort. Just a beautiful uh, thing to keep together. And hopefully I can uh, sell this as a, a whole package uh, to represent the, the family story here and keep it together. This little box is full of wristwatches. Now, a brand like this, Rico, is not a bad brand. Um, it's an automatic watch, but what's interesting about it, see it says Sony on it. This would have been a promotional watch for Sony back probably in the 1960s when they first started to come into North America. And if you dig a little further, you see there's a lovely little Sony lighter in here. Sony Micro TV and Radio Tape Quarter. How interesting is that? I don't think I've ever really come across a little uh, Sony advertising lighter before. Now these were these look kind of fun too. So if you look at it, it says Northern Music Limited, 
coin operated equipment serving the north. I'm in the north, so this guy fixed jukeboxes back in the 1950s. There's an old rock hole on there. And there's two of these lighters. There's two exactly the same. Company lighter, company pieces, a few interesting little watches. Rodana, that's a, a little decent quality watch. Uh, there's a couple in the case here as we go through and have a look. This, okay, that's a ladies tutor. That's, this is an oyster princess. Um, it's essentially a Rolex is what it is. It's a ladies uh, Rolex made watch in 1950s. Screw down crown, automatic movement. You can see it ticking away there. Needs a new crystal and it looks like the, um, the crown isn't screwing down very good right now or else somebody replace it with a crown that doesn't actually screw onto the tube. It's meant to screw onto that. Um, it should have a Rolex logo on it. So maybe they took it in for a pair and they didn't have it. Uh, and this other little piece here is another little tutor. It's kind of hard to make out the name, but they're both little tutor watches. This would be considered like a cocktail watch. Um, it's very small, very petite and delicate. They really fell out of fashion in the last little while, but they are starting to make a comeback with people who want a nice slim vintage piece that really is just jewelry that you can tell the time with. Um, the more collectible of the two, of course, is going to be the uh, automatic Oyster Princess. Lots of fans of Rolex watches, and that's a pretty good find. So a lot of fun finds came through today. Um, I'm really liking the uh, the old Sony watch and the, the ladies' Oyster Princess. I think I've got to get that one fixed up. Thank you so much for watching today's episode, guys. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You can find us on uh, Facebook under Curiosity Incorporated, on Instagram at Curiosity Inc. Y-E-G. And uh, we'll see you all soon. Bye for now.